This problem states a uniform solid shaft made up of steel and, a, and a, an aluminum segment is fit snugly between two rigid walls at 36 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature of the shaft increases to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, the reaction force at each wall due to the expansion is most close to what? So we're throwing a big wrench here, but I'm going to show you that it's no different than what we did previously. We're just now dealing with a constricted expansion. And because we're dealing with a constricted expansion and it can't freely expand due to the temperature change, there are going to be reaction forces at the wall. Stress is created within these two segments. So again, we have a uniform solid shaft. It's made up of steel and aluminum. It's fit snugly between the two rigid walls at an initial temperature of 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if that temperature is increased to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, we are asked to determine what the reaction force at the wall will be due to this expansion. Reviewing back to our previous problem, we see that we were dealing with what we call free expansion. And when we were dealing with free expansion, all we were really concerned about was the general formula given to us for thermal deformation in the NCES reference handbook. Very straightforward. So remember that the free thermal expansion is driven by that general formula that I just highlighted right there below the solution. The elongation or delta T due to thermal change is equal to the coefficient of ther thermal expansion times the original length times the temperature gradient. But we see now that we're actually dealing with a case where that e free expansion just doesn't exist. It's actually this uh, rod or this shaft is actually fit snugly between the two rigid walls. So the moment it increases in length by any any uh, capacity, a reaction force is going to occur at the ends because it's, it's a rigid wall. It's just not going to move. That in return is going to create, like I mentioned, stresses. So we mentioned this a little bit earlier during our session that there are two types of thermal expansion. We got free and constrained. In this case, we're dealing with a constrained thermal expansion. And in that case, there's going to be a simple two-step process that we will follow. Definitely looks probably intimidating at this point, but let's just run through this one example and get into some more examples and you'll see just how streamlined it can be. So we're gonna take that two-step process back over to our problem statement. And of course, we'll start with step one, which will be determine the expansion that would occur as if the object is free to do so. To carry out this step, essentially what we're going to do is remove one of the walls. So if you look at C, we're removing that wall so that we can calculate what this solid shaft would do if it was free to expand. So how much would it want to expand if it was free to do so? That's our first step. So we remove one of the constraints. Now, if we hop back to page 80 once again, we do know where our thermal deformation formula is. This is our general formula for free expansion. We will go ahead and pull that back over to our problem statement. And let's go ahead to define the variables that we have for each segment, both the aluminum and the steel. So we know the aluminum length is originally 10 inches. The steel length is originally 15 inches. We know that the original diameter of the aluminum segment is one and a half inches. For the steel segment, it's 1.25 inches. The, the installation as a whole is installed and fits snugly between these two rigid walls at 36 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the temperature of the shaft actually increases to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So knowing our free thermal expansion e formula requires that we do know the coefficient of thermal expansion for each material we're working with. 
let's go ahead and get some definition around this. So popping back to page 80, 84 once again, honing in on that upper table. We're gonna dial in on that fifth column, starting with aluminum. And then again, we have two coefficients. One, that is per degree Fahrenheit. The second being per degree Celsius. So which one are we going to use? Checking out our problem statement, we see that everything is given to us in Fahrenheit. So we're actually going to use 13.1 for aluminum times 10 to the negative six per degree Fahrenheit. So we go ahead and post that in our given data. That's just our material property for aluminum. Now let's figure the same thing out for steel. Using the same table, the column, we just identify where the steel row is and find that our coefficient of thermal expansion is going to be 6.5 times 10 to the negative six per degree Fahrenheit. So we pull that piece of data back over to our problem statement. So now we have all the data we need to determine what the free thermal expansion will be for each one of our segments. All we simply do is, first of all, identify each one uniquely. So the delta for the aluminum, the free thermal expansion for aluminum, is going to be 0 0.0048 inches. So we go ahead and plug that into our illustration or our diagram. You see I put there 0 0.0048 inches in purple. That's our free expansion. Now for our steel segment, we plug in all of our information once again, calculate it out and find that our thermal expansion for steel as it goes through this increase in temperature will be 0 0.0033 inches. So again, we're gonna go ahead and plug that in to our illustration so that we have it moving forward. So now we can move on to our second step, which is to determine the stress that would occur when the free expansion is pre prevented fully from occurring. So naturally free expansion is going to occur. If it's not constrained, no problem, no stresses will occur. However, if it is constrained, it's still going to try to expand, but those rigid walls are going to prevent it from doing so, thus creating the stresses that we're after or the reaction force that we're after. So if we hop back to page 80 of our NCES reference handbook and recall back from our second episode of this CRAM series when we worked on uniaxial, uniaxial loading and deformation, we're most interested in that little section right there which we refer to as Hooke's Law. And if we look at this form of Hooke's Law, it actually presents it to us in the form of a delta change or elongation or, or contraction. So this is going to be our second formula that we will use in, this, in the case that we have constricted or constrained thermal expansion because that, that constraint again is not going to allow that expansion which in return is going to create some stresses and this is the formula that's going to provide that information for us. So let's go ahead and put, pull Hooke's Law back over to our problem statement. We know we need the area looking at this formula so we go ahead and calculate the area of our aluminum section, our cross-sectional area of our aluminum section is 1.77 inches squared. For our steel section, it's 1.23 inches squared. Now we need the modulus of elasticity. So we're using the same property tables, page 84 of the NCES reference handbook. And this first column here is going to give us that information. So we knew our, know our first section is aluminum. We know we're uh, working in US customary units. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our, elast our modulus of elasticity, our Young's modulus back and state it as 10 MP SI. Now doing the same for steel, we're gonna pull that back over and note it as 29 MP SI. All right, so this is essentially what is going to happen. Let me flip back through these slides. So here we have free expansion. 
we remove that constraint at point C. We let our little contraption, our little solid shaft, do its expansion, do its thing as we increase the temperature. And that created an elongation in each segment. However, that's not the reality of our installation. In fact, our installation is constrained from expanding. So we really have that rigid wall at point C and we have to put that back in. Now, as you see, because of the expansion, there's now going to be some forces, some reaction forces P at both walls. However, if you see those dotted lines, the dotted purple line on our aluminum segment, the dotted blue line on our steel segment, now th that's accounting for the free expansion that does occur or the expansion that still does occur but because it's not free to expand, it actually compresses and creates that stress that we're after. Writing out our formula, essentially using Hooke's law, on the left side will be our change in length if we, if we had free expansion. And that is simply 0 0.0048 for our aluminum and 0 0.0033 inches for our steel segment. Now on the right side, we simply have P, which is our load. And in the first one, that's our aluminum segment. It's 10 inches long. We have our area and our Young's modulus for aluminum. And then our second element there is for our steel segment. They share the same load. Essentially, this is the load that is going to account for any, any of the free expansion that wants to occur so that it's constrained 100%. It does not move at all. So if we calculate that out for P, we're going to find that the reaction force is at the wall due to this temperature change from 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 73 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be 8,215 pounds force. So that's our correct answer. That is the reaction force that is going to keep that uniform solid shaft in place throughout this temperature change. So our correct answer is option C for 8,215 pounds force.